Thank you everybody for joining our Zoom meeting with Executive Directors Chat. Um, today our topic is going to be the impact of collaboration. So I'm hoping that we'll hear from everybody um, all across the globe and we are here to, to share our stories of collaboration. And I want to share with you how you can engage today. Um, mm -hmm. If it's your first time, please mute your mic. Uh, I know that a lot of people some, sometimes come on, you don't know your mic is on, but make sure your mic is muted for the quality of the recording. If you would like to yeah. speak at any time, please use the raise your hand option and then we'll ask you to unmute yourself and then make your comment or ask you a question. If you need the closed caption, it is available. Just click at the bottom of your screen and turn on where you see the CC button located in your Zoom menu and then we'll have that turned on for you. I do have a couple announcements before we get into today's topic. Um, I have mentioned this several times and we've gotten some people who say, hey, we're having a conference. We want to come to your conference. TechSoup wants to come to your conferences. If you need someone to come and share the greatness of TechSoup and what we have for nonprofits, make sure that you send an email to Denise Farrat. It's dfarrat at techsoup.org. Also, I would love for you to become a featured speaker. Now, I know some people feel like I don't want to speak in front of people. It's not you like giving a, you know, a whole exhortation of anything. It's basically you sharing about your journey in the nonprofit world, some um, failures, some successes, whatever you want to share. But this is how we learn from each other. So when you get the survey today, please put in the survey your contact information some people say, yes, I want to be a featured speaker, but no contact information. I did get a few last week, so thank you for those of you who did that. I'll be contacting you. Please put your contact information, name, website, email, how I can reach you, and even phone number if you'd like. And one last announcement. I don't know if you have seen this, but we have a newly launched part of TechSoup. It's called Quad. You're going to hear that name a lot around TechSoup now. It's a community of people who are addressing some of the global pressing issues. And again, it's a community. It's its own community within TechSoup. So you'll have separate um, webinars, tools, all kinds of things that are there. We're having uh, meetings on every Friday. I don't know. I won't say every Friday. I'm going to put the link in the chat room. It's not every Friday. There are certain Fridays. There's only about... It's only about 30 minutes, sometimes it lasts a little longer, but you'll learn a little more about Quad. You'll be able to ask questions. It's called Feed More Tech Talks because most of the people are that are in Quad now are people who provide um, food in their community, whether it's you know through the church or a separate type of nonprofit. So we'll put the link in there. So now to go to today's topic, the impact of collaborations. Look, right off the bat, before we even started, um, Chaplain, I don't know your first name now, sir. What's your first name? But Chaplain Tig. Chaplain Tig. Okay, Chaplain Tig and I were already talking and he shared with me what he was doing. And immediately I started thinking of people that I know who are in the industry, um, in the film industry that he can collaborate with. And I started sharing that information. Then Coco jumped in and started sharing that information. So the impact of collaboration, let, let me say this. We cannot do anything in today's world without collaborating, period. We need each other, whether it's writing your grants, whether it's you know helping your community, we need each other. So I want to do something real quick. I want to launch a poll to find out um, how many of you are actually collaborating with one or more organization? Um, take a moment and this is a yes or no question. Are you collaborating with one or more organization? This I love, we got a lot of yeses. This is good. This is good. We're almost at 50%. This is very, very good. And so um, the ones that said no, I totally understand. Let me show you the results. I, I understand maybe you might be new, but the ones that said yes, would somebody um, take the time and use the raise your hand option to share who you're collaborating with and, and the impact it has made on your organization? Don't be shy. And if you can't reach the raise your hand mm -hmm. button, 
you know, right away, please raise your hand. Good. I saw Don. Thank you, Don. Don, he knows the deal. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to find the button. I mean, that too much. I'll just raise my hand. So um, we have a nonprofit here in Sacramento, California, that um, helps the homeless by taking out blessing backpacks to um, the homeless, and uh, it's kind of our our. Um, uh, it's been our a grace of God that we've been able to do this since our son passed away, and so our collaboration is with our church. With um, I work at Sacramento State University. And so they actually, we have a lot of people that help us on that. So we have a lot of organizations, just small ones that just, uh, and big that help us with this part. And um, we're launching a project next year that we're hoping to get a lot of um, um, collaboration with, which is um, going to be a huge project. So um, I just want to come here and see what, what I can learn from you guys today. I love it. And thanks for sharing. So I'm going to go in this order. Thank you. I see Lynn, then Christina, and then Tim, then Kathleen, and then Chaplain Tig, and Sister Joanne. So Lynn, would you unmute yourself and welcome. Hi there. My name is Lynn Williams. I'm based out of uh, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, just suburbs of Philly. And I run a 501c3 nonprofit that does career education and networking. So uh, we run up to 40, 50 events a month online uh, for people um, who are managing their careers. I'm actually speaking for TechSoup on June 21st. So I will put the link in for that. And it is on LinkedIn for nonprofits. So here's my first information. And then when I dig out the link in just a hot minute, I will add that on. So thanks for having me here. I love it. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for what you do as well. All right, Christina, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think uh, being in a uh, nonprofit sector, collaboration is very important, uh, especially when you're really trying to meet the needs of community. There's so much work to be done and you can't do it all, right? Especially if you're working in one area, you, you don't want a mission chase, right? Doing the work that you do really well. And when you see issues come up or areas of need, collaborating with other organizations to be able to provide that need. And so that has worked for us, but not only that, partnering with non-traditional forms of partners. So that could be actual community members, that could be residents, youth, um, faith leaders, you know. Um, so, you know, that's has worked really well for us. And you have to have collaboration to be able to really meet the needs of, of community. Thank you for sharing that, that's so true. Um, I, I see some people, who, Kat, Tim was next. I'm sorry, Tim, thank you. Okay, Tim, we lost you. I'm um, not here. Okay, all right, there you go. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I came to the realization when we started our organization, we, we feed people and we start with food because we know hunger interferes with healing. Uh, and prior to the pandemic, we were serving uh, 42 families twice a month. And since the pandemic, uh, we're, we're serving upwards of 1,500 families a month uh, and three to 400 families a week. Um, but what I realized is that it's more than food. Yeah. And so we were able to collaborate with a... Uh, a medical center and they did uh, health fairs in the parking lot. Uh, we collaborated with a recovery program uh, and were able to uh, feed their members uh, on, on a regular basis because many of them, uh, they come with the clothes on their back and nothing else. So it's, uh, it's a matter of, of me uh, reaching out into the community and looking at what other services are available and then making those services available. I'm so impressed about the number of people that you feed every week. That's a lot of people. Yeah. And it's families. It's not just individuals. It's families. So it's wow. Yeah. Thank you for what you do. Thanks. Okay, Kathleen. Hello, I'm Kathleen Forbes. I'm the Director of Programs and Services for ECHO, which is East Cooper Community Outreach. 
And we are located in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, which is just outside of Charleston. Um, we've been in, in existence since 1989 um, and were founded right after Hurricane Hugo um, devastated the area. Um, we have four main areas of service. We have a food pantry, a medical clinic, a dental clinic, a clothing closet, and then our general client navigation services. Um, the, actually, the whole point of our navigation team is to do our client intake process, but also provide referrals to other nonprofit organizations who do better at the things that we don't do. Um, I've been in the nonprofit sector for a very long time, and I think that some of the um, maybe the weakness of nonprofits is that sometimes we try to be everything to everyone, and it's really, really important um, to be able to decide what you're going to offer and what you're good at, because there is another nonprofit who's offering something else. Um, and to take that to the next level, um, we recently reached out to several nonprofits in our area and said, come learn about us. So during the month of April and May, um, we just sent out a sign up genius to all these different contacts at nonprofit organizations and said, come take a tour, like come learn about us. We wanna learn about you. And it has been the easiest thing and the best thing. We are making connections. People are learning about us because we refer to them and they refer to us. And we want to make sure that it's easy and that we're not making clients, um, you know, run on a wild goose chase and say, hey, you can go over to this organization because we heard that they provide such and such service. We want to make it as easy as possible on our clients and give them the right information. So an hour long tour. Um, we limited it to like six organizations at a time so that we can have conversation. Um, and by the end of two months, we will have over 60 people come through to learn about ECHO and we've learned about them. That is amazing. Everything that you said, we could just close the webinar right now <laughs> because you, you drop seeds, you drop nuggets, you drop diamonds, you drop jewels. That was amazing um, what you shared about you collaborating with other nonprofits. You can't do it by yourself. Um, having the open house where they can come and learn about you. That is amazing. You can do that for your funders as well. This, this was, that was good. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Chaplain Tig. Yeah. Wow. That was, that was fantastic. I, I can plus just, I keep plus one in plus one in that. And Don, um, that was really moving. Thank you so much for, I mean, after having tragedy like that, it is uh, quite a legacy uh, to help others. Um, you know, um, I we started our first nonprofit like 25 years ago, and um, we I was traveling across the country. We were doing a lot with X Games and bringing youth together, and we bring a lot of nonprofits. Um, all together for these events. And one of the things that consistently happened is we would have um, youth service organizations that were 15 minutes away from each other that had never met each other, that didn't know that the other one existed. And so it just, it really, it really uh, uh, reinforced the, the need for us to work together and to reach out we're so busy in our trenches uh, working on the demographic that we're called to serve that sometimes we don't poke our head out of our hidey hole. And uh, sometimes it's just so vital for us to poke our head out and say, who else is around me? Um, and, uh, and just shed ego and reach out and find out who can I help? And you'll be amazed how many people want to help you too. Wow, that was a lot. I know the last word that caught me was shedding your ego. And that's what, if you're not collaborating with anybody or you haven't started and you've been in existence for three to five years, maybe you have to put aside that ego and say, I need help. Cause that's what collaboration is, is saying, I need help really. 
and we work together. That was, thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, y'all are taking me to church. You're taking me to college. You, you're sharing so much today. Thank you so much. Sister Joanne, welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm on the East Coast predominantly. I'm a retired school principal. And during that 45 year period, um, you pick up hints of how to get people to help you and you to help people. Um, best thing I can tell you is make yourself known in your neighborhood. You could be right down the street and nobody knows what you do because I don't know about you, but we don't have a six foot marquee that flashes what we need on it. Sometimes we're little holes in the wall. You know, don't be afraid to get out and shake some hands, introduce yourself, take advantage of all your places of worship. They all have bulletin boards free, put it on. Some of them will offer to have you come in and speak to their communities. There are senior citizen gatherings. And just because you might deal with young people or something, senior citizens have family. It's making yourself known and what you do. Another thing um, is if somebody can't partner with you, they know somebody that can. That's another reason why you have to make it known. In other words, I'm here down the street. If I can ever do something for you, by the way, do you know anybody else that could be interested in what I do? And to just drop a hint. What are they going to tell you? No. Does a no hurt? No, it doesn't. You go to the next one and the next one and the next one. Lastly, big hint. In this day of electronic communication, beautiful, fast, but nothing beats a handwritten thank you. They hang it up. They look at it. it. It's concrete proof. It doesn't get lost in the email printouts. So, you know, a simple thing. And have your information ready to hand out. Here's my card. Uh, uh, it's something simple and what you do. It's amazing. And you promise yourself you're going to do a reach out every day. I'm either going to call, contact, write, or visit one person two persons, what does it take? 20 minutes, half hour? Even when you stop and pick up your coffee at Starbucks, McDonald's, they all have something. You have to, it takes 20 minutes to get out there and say, hello, I'm right down the street, I'm over here, I'm over there. And you'd be surprised how fast people jump in when they know that what you do is for the good of other people. I can't begin to tell you that enough. My life was spent in inner city, multicultural, multilingual. They could use a lot of help. They got it. But I, I had to go and ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't. Thank you. Woo. Ah, okay. I told you y'all were going to go to church today. But listen, <laughs> Sister Joanne, you said so many things and all the speakers said so many things. So what I normally do, do this at the end, but right now, everybody put in the chat room one thing that you've already learned. Sister Joanne just said, make yourself known. Put in the chat room something you've learned from Chaplain Tiggs, from Dawn, from Tim. Put in the chat room something that you've already learned. And Coordinator, I do see your hand. I want to see what other people are saying, one of their takeaways. And uh, Sister Chaplain Tiggs, you got, you are wise. And uh, Sister Joanne, you are wise. Get out there and work. Army Armstead said, geography doesn't have a limit to collaboration. Yes. And Robert, engage in your local community. Yes. Um, Megan, foster that abundant mindset. Connect, connect, connect. Yes. Maria said, don't be afraid. I love that. I love that. This is great. Cara, our, our art mask maker space needs to say hi in person to our mo she's got a lot of things yeah go to our new mobile home tenants go next door yeah i just learned about emergent work and we will be sending an email um teresa said uh, beverly said talk to everyone michelle get to know your neighbors jo joanny i think this is how you pronounce your name i apologize if i'm saying it wrong have an open house yes 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 larry figure out ways to connect figure out ways to connect john said meet other 
groups or meet others for growth. Yes, I love that. This is great, you guys. Thank you so much. Coordinator, let us know who you really are. Welcome. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, hi there. Uh, well, it was really nice to listen to everyone. And uh, I'm working with Border Charity. We are a small organization here, but then uh, we collaborated with the National Peace Corps Association. And they got their volunteers who have been serving our many communities worldwide. So uh, primarily uh, they are addressing health and education issues. And uh, they would come to us I mean, if they find any village uh, that has a water issue or a sanitation problem. So that's where we are getting most of the projects. And uh, we are putting them on our website. We raise funds for them. And we get the things organized and do things for the people. And right now we have helped uh, more than 8 million people. Uh, in more than 81 countries. Wow, that's a lot of people. Thank you for what you do and all the work y'all have to put into it. Wow. So we've just heard from a lot of people on how they collaborate and the fact that they are collaborating. So I know several of you said that you are not collaborating. So would you like to ask um, someone here, because this is this is a group, This we're, we're in this together, um, any questions um, for those of you who said no and don't be shy. This is a safe place. This is a great place to start. Go ahead, Larry. You're uh, you're muted. There you go. Hi everybody, I'm the founding director of Help Now Advocacy. We assist people through a myriad of crises. I mean, literally everything the mind can think of uh, has come through our doors in the last 18 years. We've been based in Medford, Oregon, Southern Oregon for 16 of those 18 years, but because the service we offer is unique nationally, and we've literally spent, pardon me, hundreds of hours uh, researching that to see if there were other organizations with whom we could collaborate because they were doing the same thing, we found that there was nothing out there that was doing anything similar to what we're doing. And uh, so uh, I'm, asking the question because we are finding that spreading from local to national is a very heavy lift, so to speak, that uh, we are looking for uh, groups with whom we can collaborate. And uh, uh, I, I put the question out there to the other members of the uh, group here, what, what, how how best to go about doing that. I mean, we found groups like the Red Cross, obviously, that helps people through, help people through emergencies and Catholic charities, but they simply don't respond. And so- Larry, tell, tell us what you do again. It was kind of muffled for me in the beginning. Tell us what your organization does. People call us when they're in some kind of life disrupting challenge or crisis. And- uh, we try, well, all right, I'll give you an example that's going on right now. Uh, we have a, a man who uh, was overcharged for rent uh, for about six, seven years. And uh, uh, we, we, in the process of, of getting him that rent back, which we've now done, we found he's a, a disabled vet that his uh, VA representative payee who distri uh, distributes money to him uh, was not acting in his best interest. So one of the things we're doing right now as a follow-up to what we did was is to help this disabled vet replace that rep payee. Uh, but we've, uh, to answer your question, Rita, we've helped seniors get literally hundreds of thousands of dollars back that they've been scammed. We've averted power shutoffs, foreclosures, evictions. Uh, we helped a woman get out of a slave cult, a sex slave cult. She came into our office with a leather strap around her neck. We extricated her from that. Literally everything under the sun. We don't charge and we help people immediately. We've helped almost 10,000 people since inception. Actually, more than that, but including... Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Now we have a better idea. So you do a lot of things. Um, anyone here, say that again? The breadth is our strength and also the immediacy of our service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So any was did anybody hear something that you picked up and said, okay, we do something similar like that? Because as soon as you said it, I said it, well, sounds like you get in touch with the media, but I see you. Go ahead, Mr. Special. All right, so um, we're a community art center officially, but what that really means is, well, people making friends, like to how we've reduced what, what our mission actually is, is people making friends. Now, so ours, we come at a, at a little bit of a different angle, although you're dealing with directly with a crisis, we're often dealing in the non-crisis level on, on re-educating the public. Uh, but as far as how to collaborate, um, we collaborate with a lot of different organizations and uh, most of those have started organically. We have not gone out intentionally to cultivate them, but they were the people who came in and they said, hey, we like what you're doing. And usually we run on donations where we have a thrift store and that's how we fund our whole process. And um, so it's, it's often, well, I have this resource. And then as we get more resources, we actually get overwhelmed and the idea is to actually get rid of them as quick as possible, find somebody else. So some of these collaborations kind of happen, as I said, organically. Um, but where you would look for collaborations is not in, in the same thing that you do, uh, but in people who are doing uh, different. Um, if you've helped 10,000 people, then you have a hundred thousand connections through those people, right? Um, and all of those people are are connected in other ways. Um, going back, possibly in in your history, you might uh, reach out to the people who have you have successfully helped, and say, "Please help us spread the word." Uh, one of the things we've really been looking at and focusing lately is that people need to be needed. So if you can ask them at your, your community that you have already helped for help and they have a way to give back to you, you'll generate more um, connections. Uh, like I said, none of these have we research, uh, um, uh, tried to actively get. Uh, now, now I'm going into a phase where I do expect that we are going to be actively addressing that. Our thrift store model has worked very well, uh, but I know that we can do a whole lot more. So I am going to be starting to connect with uh, people at the heads of organizations saying, this is what we need. And actually we need some cash and can you help? Um, but even then, uh, Aretha, a few uh, sessions back, we talked about that in that it's, you don't start with the cash that you want to ask for. You, you say, hey, we have something in common. Right, right. Well, um, that, thank you. And work up to the cash. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Larry, I hope you're able to pick up something. And a lot of people put some things in the chat room here. Um, they put Catch a Fire has a wealth of resources for bi-monthly ED networking groups um, to have skill-based volunteer matches. Um, check out the organization. Um, their job is collaboration. It's called Gwinnett Collaboration. It's similar to a Monopoly chess game. So a lot of people put some suggestions in here, but I know um, that everyone is different. I, I, Larry, I know everyone is different. So I was hoping that you could you could get some nuggets from today. Um, anybody else have any comments or questions? I have a second poll that I wanna launch real quick. This one. Do you fundraise with other organizations? Because this is a great way to collaborate and raise money too. A lot of times we want, you know, I, one of the EDs said um, to be a minosaur. It's all about me and like a dinosaur, be old. So minosaur, me, 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 me. But, you know, being open and collaborating is very important. So I see um, quite a few of you said that you do, but most people say that you do not. I'm going to end the poll. I think we've got um, 60, oh, almost 70% participation. So most of you say you do not. 
um, fundraise for people. It's okay if you don't, but um, for those of you who do, we always started with the do. Those of you who don't, let's let's hear why. Feel free to share why. Um, if you want to unmute your your um, microphone, use the raise your hand options. And it, look, sometimes you just don't have time. It could be the time thing that you you don't want to collaborate with anybody in fundraising. But I've seen it work in many ways. Michelle, hi, welcome. Hi, thank you, Aretha. Um, so I'm in, in the boat that Sister Joanne mentioned a little bit ago, which struck me. Nobody's got a 10-foot sign or a 6-foot sign blinking, here we are. And that's part of the reason we don't fundraise with others is because nobody knows who we are and no, because I am in a hidey hole, <laughs> you know, and um, um, as hard as we've tried, we still haven't generated a lot of knowledge or, or um awareness of our ministry. So I'm working on that. Um, but I think that's a great step because I'd never thought about fundraising with others. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. I see a lot of people in the chat room are saying um, they haven't, they just haven't looked at it. And um, Coco said, I'm saying no, but there are shades of gray in that no. So yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, Dawn says, I'm with Chaplain Tig. We haven't yet, but we're definitely planning to. Very good. Um, Tox Toxie Turner said, we just haven't built the necessary relationship yet. Very key, the word relationship, because that's really what collaboration is all about. Relationship. And um, one thing that Sister Joanne said was saying thank you. Sometimes when you've had that one um, connection with someone or an organization, writing a thank you note or sending the pictures you know, with a thank you on it or an email, I'm telling you, thank you goes a long way and it open up other doors as well. So keep that in mind. A lot of people are typing in the chat room. Um, they want to know, would love to know some approach. So those of you who do, oh, Ter Therese, I see your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute your, yourself. Awesome. We, we haven't collaborated, but I think that's in our future. And I can tell you, I'm in Santa Fe. And um, I used to go to the executive director's uh, learning circle they'd have free every month to help us and help each other. And it was really beautiful. But they told us almost 10 years ago that if someone uh, applies for a grant, say for 5,000 and someone else is applying for the same grant for 5,000 and someone else is collaborating for 10,000 between the two, they'll hands down give it to the collaborators because they're trying to make, they want to reward the collaborators and they're trying to teach everyone to collaborate. They've been doing that for 10 years. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Just a reminder, this is being recorded and you will get the replay within 48 hours. And the New York Council said they're fundraising with another org for the first time right now. Um, they have different networks and missions, so the boards weren't afraid to share. I would love for you to share about that. And Tim, I see your hand raised. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Yeah, um, you mentioned quad uh, at the beginning. And I'm. my question is, what we are experiencing in this meeting, is that similar to what you hope to accomplish with quad? This is going to be one of the things with quad. I, quad, I can't tell you everything about quad because quad is That's not okay. my baby. Right. But this is one of the things. And and say um, you you all will focus just on food insecurity. I'm just giving an example. Right. They're gonna, you're going to have like you know templates. You're going to have so many other things. And there's discounts. Um, no no admin fees on the products or software that TechSoup has. So that's one of the things that quad is about. Um, nice. I would love if yeah join that feed more tech talks, but yeah, this is one of the things you have your own community. Uh, New York Council, Navy League, hi. Hi, thanks Aretha. I'm Jess, I'm the executive director at the New York Council Navy League. And one project we had come up is something that Navy Leagues around the country typically do. So we're helping commission a new Navy ship. The ship happens to be named or prospectively named the USS Cooperstown. So we looped in the Baseball Hall of Fame up in Cooperstown and we started doing some planning together. And then we took the baby steps to, you know, okay, let's let's do one promotional mailing, co-branded. And now we're realizing that it's just the power of combining our networks, which 
you know, pl we have plenty of baseball fans among our constituents. They have plenty of supporters of the sea services in theirs, but no actual overlap and, until now, because uh, now that we're able to get each other's messages across, we are doing some cross enrollment for other programs as well outside of the commissioning. Um, but the fundraising is just, I think, getting even stronger by automatically reaching a larger group and having two names on there, you know, kind of show that there's a community behind this event. Mm, I love it. And thank you for what you do. I'm retired Navy. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you're a member of the Navy League near you. I am not. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, thank you, though. I appreciate your comments. Thanks. Okay, Shannon, I see your hand, and then I'm going to go to some questions in the chat room. Hey, uh, I'm Shannon Peterson out here in Seattle, Washington. Um, I'm kind of a quasi-executive director, <laughs> and the reason I say that is because I'm on a board of directors, and we're, we are attempting to create a new um, 501c3 that is an offshoot of our religious organization, our church. Um, our church has shrunk to a point that it is unsustainable, but we also have moved into a quite an outreach position um, and wanting to build a multi-faith community center in our building because our building is, is larger than us at this point. Um, so, our, so our goal is to create a nonprofit that is multi-faith, um, but also community driven. Uh, so we are, so my first, my first reason for being on this call is to get ideas. My second reason is um, finding the best source to find a dynamic executive director that would be interested in helping us build a new nonprofit. Um, we do have a few resources, but I feel like we don't have enough resources to get that information of how do you find a great executive director that wants to start a new nonprofit, um, basically from the ground up with a somewhat different type of structure. Um, we're in the middle of a neighborhood and it's like I said, it's a church we're zoned as a church, so it so the kind of the legal structure has to stay that way. But we really want the nonprofit to run the building. Um, so that's my first question: How do I find a great executive director or pool of executive directors, or where do I start? And then my second part of being on this call is I'm doing career change and um, moving from my past career in inventory and retail to project management because I've been volunteering in nonprofits for the past 20 plus years and that's where my heart lies. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, studying project management and starting to take on projects for nonprofits uh, just as a contract worker. So if anybody needs any um, projects, I'd be happy to put my contact information in the chat and uh, I can work with you. I have a lot of wide varying experiences to be able to offer to nonprofits. So I can hear in all of your voices, uh, executive directors are stretched thin and sometimes you just need a little extra help on the side. So, so, so awesome. kind of twofold. Sorry, it just takes so much time. No, 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 well, you're perfect. Shannon, put your information in the chat room and Coco gave you some advice. Like the more you talk about what you need, like in your community, in your circles about needing an executive director, the odds are you will probably find that person that you need. Um, and of course, I'm sure your members will be telling everybody once you put up a job description that, you know, we're hiring and, you know, reach out to colleges. Um, Sister Joanne, okay. look to your neighborhood first, obviously. Um, so a lot, a lot of, lots of some, some advice in here. Um, I'm going to go back to the question about collaboration here in the chat. I saw something that Liz wrote. It's a splitting, splitting fundraising. We hold a combined annual golf tournament 
and split the net proceeds 50-50, we informally try to divide the time commitment equally. So I love that. I love that advice. And I love that you shared that y'all are doing that. Anybody else? This has been, I mean, like, y'all, this has been amazing. Yes, Sister Joanne, go ahead. Um, I wrote about it in the chat room, but I want to say it in case you don't get there. The National Neighborhood Night Out is the first Tuesday in August every year. It's, it's usually an evening, afternoon, evening event. You register in your local area. I mean, I don't know. When I, when I first got involved out in Western PA, it was free. You just had to register so they knew you were coming. You put up a table. You put out all your info. You get your people there surrounding. And who comes it are the neighborhood folks. But meantime, you're going around looking at everybody else's table. Mm -hmm. and making friends with people that are in the neighborhood. It's called the National Neighborhood Night Out. First Tuesday in August. Usually they start registration mid-July. Fantastic free interaction. And some communities that have been doing it for a long time really get into it. I mean, they invite food vendors in. I mean, it's a night to meet people and get your word out. Okay, thank you. I love it. And I love how she was like, drop the mic. Okay, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> I love, we have that in our neighborhood. Beverly, I see your hand raised. How are you? Good to see you again. You're still on mute. I'll, 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 I'll mute myself. Okay. I have a bit, uh, nonprofit called Sewing Hope Incorporated. And we provide blankets for foster children. And I've gotten myself into more things by talking about my sewing ministry being provider of blankets because everybody's talking about food and supplies and everything for everybody else. And I thought, I got to speak up. I mean, I live in the Tampa Bay area and there's probably between eight and 10,000 foster children between three counties. Five, uh, Hillsborough County, a couple of years ago, had more than 5,000 foster children in Hillsborough County, which outdid the Miami-Dade at that particular time. I mean, the Pasco and Hillsborough County are much smaller uh, quantities wise, but these kids just absolutely, when you give them a blanket, you know, the shoes, the socks, the clothes and everything like that, they come and go because they wear out of them. They wear them out or they grow out of them but the blanket is theirs to keep and that goes with them for everywhere they go. Yeah. And, and it's treasured. It's a treasure for them because with them, um, when somebody's blanket gets lost, there's no peace in the household. <laughs> that is so true. Beverly, thank you for sharing that. That is beautiful. And you're right down the road from I'm in Orlando. So we have to do coffee or tea or something soon. All right, um, Tim, I see your hand raised. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, this is for Beverly. Uh, there is an organization, a nonprofit that provides uh, suitcases uh, for the foster kids uh, because many, many of the foster kids uh, come into the families with plastic bags full of their stuff. And this, this kit that they provide, uh, it's not just a suitcase. It, it has lots of different items in it. So um, I'm sorry, the name of the organization escapes me. I, uh, I'm afflicted with some timers. I'm sorry. Uh, my, my, my group is Sewing Hope, but I give them to Eckerd Connects. And Eckerd Connects just uh, backed out of the Foster for Children program. And there's a new company coming in. I haven't met them yet. But they uh, do provide uh, tote bags mm -hmm. or backpacks for the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. They come in in garbage bags. They're clothes. Yeah. Everything yeah. they come in with. And some of them come. And some of the kids are taken from school. And so they never don't even have a chance to get right. home. Right. And so they just come with the clothes on their back. And they provide clothes for the first week. And then yeah. there's another group called uh, Close, uh, Close to Kids that provides clothes for the rest of the time. But, uh, and then they, and they, and everybody gets a blanket. There you go. 
Thank you for sharing. Um, Alexandrina, did I say that right? Yes, you do. You said it right, correctly. Awesome. Hi. The reason I was, um, I put my hand up. Um, I put no, that we do not collaborate. Um, and no, we don't fundraise, partly because my organization is really, really tiny. And it, um, it is, it's not <laughs> one where we're providing like a humanitarian service. We offer dance in our community and um, it's very culturally related. So it's not something that we're the only one in our county that does what we do. Um, and it's free to most um, families that have low incomes. So not too many other places are offering that particular type of service. You know, people offer after school programs, they offer sports, um, things like that, but not um, ethnic dance. So that's the part of the, that's really the reason. Fundraising, we've had people to, um, you know, have us come and dance for them as, as performing. And therefore, I, I don't know whether you consider that sh fundraising together. We come, we dance for you, you give us money. Um, and, um, you know, we get a lot of in-kind services. So I don't, I, I, that's why I said, no, we don't. But then I'm wondering, are those things that we're that I'm telling you about the in-kind services, et cetera, or what you're considering collaboration? Mm, so yeah, not everybody needs to collaborate. Um, and you gave a perfect example with your school, you know, the dance school. So I, I don't see y'all needing other um, food banks to collaborate with. However, your fundraising, you always need money. So maybe there's ways that you can collaborate with, like you said, the people who are inviting you to dance. Um, make it a long-term collaboration. We come dance for you quarterly. You promote us. That's collaboration. Collaboration doesn't always mean like um, you give me this, I give you that. It could just mean sharing. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Anybody else have any um, advice or anything for Alexandrina? Alexandrina. Sorry, Miss Dixon. <laughs> Drina's fine. Okay, Drina. I'll remember that next time. Go ahead, Tori. Hey guys, uh, I'm Tori Pigram. I'm the Director of Development and Strategic Partnerships um, for Christian County Library. We're a public library in Southwest Missouri. So I just want to put a shout out to uh, public nonprofits. Um, if those of you have not tried to connect with your local public library to figure out ways that you can work together and get the word out about what you do. So of course, a lot of them might put out flyers about your business, but my position in the library, we have um, engineered so that I am both the fundraiser, the grant writer, and the person looking for new partnerships. So um, that is because a lot of people like to talk about money, but a lot of the kind of strategic partnership conversations I get mm -hmm. into when I go visit other nonprofits or invite them into the library, often that'll kind of spiral into joint programming, things that we might do together. Maybe the library is putting together a resource guide for resources in the community for people who come into the library. Um, for Adrena, we've had several nonprofits who have come in and we've uh, set it up to do library programming with them. So for example, you could check with your library to see um, if they might even be able to fund either through a grant that they write with you um, to have, you know, to pay for you to come in to maybe teach some classes locally. And then we try to position those when we bring in nonprofits that do things as a way for them to be able to then recruit people who might be paid members later. So they can't, um, they can't have people pay there, but if it's sort of a free service or or a volunteer service, um, you know, they can, by giving the free classes, they can kind of find new people to be members or new people to be participants. Um, we've done that with like ESL classes, for example, a local university came and gave some free ESL classes and also have paid ESL classes and they can kind of recruit people who have that need through the platform of the library. We get a win because we're able to off offer something, you know, for free to patrons. And if we need money to be able to pay them to come in to do that, then I'm I'm right there to help write a grant 
um, and maybe we can write it with them and we can both get, maybe they can get some new supplies, new computers that they can then keep and use um, and, and we get something out of it too. So I would just encourage you to remember that public services, I mean, I think most local health departments also, sometimes local schools, but especially libraries, I think all of you have probably heard we're not just about books anymore. We're really looking to kind of curate people and ideas and resources in our communities as much as we can. Um, uh, so please reach out to us and, and think about that. Beverly, also just to say we have a group, uh, a couple groups that meet at the library, the hookers, um, who are a, a rug hooking group and they make, they make rugs for charity. So just remember too that usually your public libraries do pretty routinely now offer free meeting space for um, meetings that you might have with other collaborators or if you have a small office space and you want to have a meeting with a client or someone like that. But we also have a group that makes blankets for um, cancer patients in a local hospital. And that is a collaboration where we have also had them do a program to teach patrons how to make those blankets and they've had them come in and then the blankets they make in the library program are given away, but then they're kind of recruiting new people to help them out. Um, and of course we got some grant money to fund paying them to be able to be the presenter for that. So look to your libraries, please. I think we're out there everywhere you are and we are trying to really hard to connect and be grounded and, and, and help you guys connect with each other figure out ways um, to work together. And I'll say a lot of us are collaborating with businesses too, or trying to. We had like a local pizza restaurant that let us set up a table to make new library cards for people and then gave 10% or actually 40% of the profits from that night once a month back to the library. So there, there are ways that you could probably do that too if you are a nonprofit, not just a library. Talk to a, a local business that you think might be interested, see if they'll let you come in one night a month to, to talk about what you do and see if they might be willing to give you a little cut for that night um, if you help advertise their business too, assuming it's it's a business that you can agree with the, the philosophy of and whatnot. So just thank a shout you. out from libraries, use us please. Yeah, thank you, Tori. And I'm, I'm telling you, I concur with her 100% with the libraries. The libraries of wealth of knowledge, as we know growing up, but now as an adult, you know, we can use them as well, especially for our nonprofit. So thank you so much. Andrew, would you put the link for QA in the chat room for me? That that would be great. I want to see if there's any other questions. If not, I'm going to give you your time back. Um, I'm going to ask you to fill out the survey because I would love. There are so many of you that have so much information that you need to share with other nonprofits. I want you to be a featured speaker. So please fill out the survey, put your contact information, how I can reach out to you. And I'll reach out to you um, and, and bring you on because um, we need you. Everybody here, we, we need each other. Today was about collaboration. And if you did not feel the impact from start to finish, then you will probably sleep. So wake up and let's go, y'all. Let's go. All right. So as I always close out all of my um, webinars, Therese, did you want to say something? You're muted. You're muted, sweetie. You are on mute. Okay, there you go. I just wanted to add that although we're not currently collaborating, the organization before I was with them for many years, it's an educational organization, but they were collaborating with the local Native American musicians and artists and poets. And they and we were my the founder and um, board chair, he's been doing this since he was 17 years old, he's in his 70s now, but he was producing those performances and those music festivals, Native American music festivals and winning awards for them. And it's a beautiful way, you know, everything's opening up now, so to speak, but people are still being careful, but outdoors, you know, music is international language. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Listen, while you're out there taking care of everybody else, please make time to take care of yourself. I'll see you next time on the next webinar, everybody. Bye.